of sound in motion pictures is one of continual research and improvement. The talking motion picture of today has brought to the screen new heights of creative expression. Number one, language is a universal tool. Our biggest problem is the act of misunderstanding or not being able to understand at all. With such technological advances today, we are now capable of holding up a phone and having it translate for us. But that is simply for human communications. We cannot translate animals or nature itself without the help of professionals. But what if? What if we could simply attempt to hear nature? Not just owls hooting or birds cooing, but plants, trees, mushrooms. What if they had a voice? What if we could give them one? What if we could listen to nature? YouTuber Michael Lyko had experimented with this concept. Here is the sound of nature. What you are currently listening to, through the roughest of speculations, is a whole entire ecosystem coming into connection with another ecosystem. In other words, these two mushrooms are having a chat. Michael Lyko speculates that their synthesizer, while picking up on communication signals between the two pals, is also perhaps picking up on the possibility of these two mushrooms sharing water, transporting nutrients, and other miscellaneous biological activity. <laughs> Michael Lyko explains how they were capable of doing this in a later video that I have linked below. Their channel consists of a library full of these kinds of videos, different types of mushrooms getting the chance to be heard through synthesization. While the sound seems to stay completely chaotic, I couldn't help but think that, at the end, when they pull the mushrooms apart, the very last few seconds seems to be the mushrooms calling out. Simply as if to say, Hey, where'd you go? Number two. If a plant can communicate interest and confusion, then it can communicate stress. Here is what happens when Michael Lyko pushes a kitchen knife inside of his lion's mane mushroom. Before they use the knife, the mushroom chirps in high notes almost gleefully and playfully. But as soon as Michael Lyko carves a chunk of the mushroom off, 
it seemingly shrieks out in both high-piercing screeching synths and low tonal drones, as if communicating that it is in pain. After a moment, they go back in for multiple carves, and the process repeats itself each time. The mushroom beeps out in distorted ranges of frequencies, sounding like it's pleading out in rage and remorse. The difference between how the lion's mane beeped in the beginning versus in the end is haunting. Michael Lyko would go on to state that the pieces that were carved would be dehydrated and made into herbal medicine. Number three. On March 31st, 2023, fellow YouTube narrator and past collaborator, Vidith, would upload a video completely different to his catalog of videos. So, uh, I was going through my TikTok to try and get stuff, you know, public and get some more uploads ready. And, uh, I forgot I had this private video from like a year ago. So, uh, it'd just be easier if I showed you. Guys, don't talk. Like, what the fuck? I reached out to ask Vidith some questions, to which he responded saying, So, for context, we were all on a CSGO server with only myself and my two brothers. All three of us were on PC. It was coming through one of my brother's mics while his mic was on, but he wasn't talking, so the mic would just be catching whatever the hell that noise was. This has not happened before or since then. We still have no idea what it was. Possibly it was his mic dying, or maybe something wrong with the output from his mic. It is extremely likely that the scream is a technical malfunction issue that is being broadcasted through microphones and TV speakers, similar to how old Xbox microphones used to have an echo to them. Nonetheless, it is still chilling to sit in silence and hear a scream emanate from your screen. Like, what the f Number four. April 14th, 2021. The channel, and I'm definitely going to get this wrong, Sosnovoya Griva would upload a 42 minute long video of a hiker and cameraman traveling through the thick woods of Siberia. Originally on the lookout for animals to hunt, he would discover that he himself could potentially be the one being hunted. More than a dozen times in the video, something unexplainable lurks beyond Sergei's sight and knowledge. Metallic banging and knocking. Booms and thuds. And a barrage of distant screams. Yeah. 
Давай. Many in the comments speculate this to be the evidence of Sasquatch, while others speculate potential human trafficking, or even possible murders being accidentally recorded. I'll leave that up to you to decide. Number five. In August of 1997, Howard Stern was at the peak of his controversial hit radio show, The Howard Stern Show, when he received a call that would shock audiences around the world for years to come. Howard Stern would spend his time discussing details with a serial murderer. I got a guy on the phone who claims he's been killing prostitutes and he's wondering why he's doing it. Oh, so maybe uh, he, he thinks I have an answer. Is this Ed? Ed? No, this isn't Ed. No. You haven't killed any prostitutes? No, I never said my name was Ed. Oh. oh. Sorry. That's yeah, okay. What's your what name do you use? You can call me Clay. Clay? Clay? <laughs> yes, Clay. Okay, Clay. So what happened? How many prostitutes have you killed? Twelve. And you're wondering why you do it? I have a pretty good idea. Why? Did your mom beat you? Did your mom spank you? Did, uh... Was your mom a prostitute? No. Actually, nothing like that. What is it, then? I think I just do it for the sense of the power. Right. Do you have sex with them first? Yes, and... And then what, you strangle them? Once. How else did you kill them? Well, a few times, actually, most times with a hammer. Hmm. And where do you do this primarily? Uh, I've done it twice in a parking garage. A little into the interview, Clay seems to have this realization that he is officially on air. He is exposing his sins to the public world, and there is no going back. He asks if he's talking to Howard Stern himself, pauses, and then continues on his voice quivering, yet his words remain bold. Dude, you're a serial killer. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And you get away with it, I guess, because they're hookers, and so far Is nobody's... Howard? What? Is this Howard? Yeah. Hello? Hello? I didn't know this was Howard. Yeah, it's yeah, Howard. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've never killed a kitten. So how old were, were you when you killed your first woman? Sixteen. And uh, you must be a powerful kind of guy, big guy. Uh, I wasn't then. Right. And uh, when you killed your first one, did you go in there knowing you were going to kill her, or it just sort of happened? I I knew. I, I, had, I really had it planned out. Hmm. You know, I wanted to do the whole sending clues. Right. Oh, yeah, are you in... Baffle people, but it turned out no one noticed for a long time. Right. As Howard calmly interrogates him, it's clear that Clay's actions were intentional. It never was an accident. He wanted to murder. He even discusses wanting to leave a specific trademark for his killings, like finger painting, but never went through with it. He explains that there was no abuse that often trails into adulthood symptoms, as the cliche goes. Clay seems, unfortunately enough, to be an average Joe blends in with society, strikes at night. He even explains that he himself is a father, but that sometimes he just gets bored. Therefore, that's enough reasoning for him to murder. And then what'd you do with the body? You dumped that somewhere? Um, yeah, actually, I think uh, she's probably one of the ones that they found. Yeah. But let me ask you something. You were sending clues that you were going to do this? No, I was 
Uh, and he was going to like doing that. He was going to leave like a note for the newspapers, and you know. Uh, but you decided not to. He didn't want to be famous or draw attention to himself. But my problem no, is, that's, you could... that's what I wanted to do. But oh, but you did, but no one noticed the clues. I no, I never sent the clues. I never no. left anything. You know, I wanted to have my own little signature. Right. I wanted the thumb paint. Oh, it's with uh, their thumbs. Oh, really? What do you want to do? Thumb paint with their thumbs. Thumb paint what though? I don't know. Oh, anything. It, it was in a comic book a couple of years ago. It just seemed like a good idea. Like you take the girl you killed, you, you dip her thumbs in paint, and then you do like a thumb painting? Yes. On a piece of paper? Yeah. Hmm. Now, when you after you kill somebody, do you play with the body? Um, actually, the closest I've ever done to that is I always make sure I pay them and I make sure they keep their money. All right, so you finish with your uh, sexual gratification. And then you. Not always, no. Not always. You don't even want to get laid sometimes. No, I just. You just want to kill. Uh, I'm just bored. Clay comes off as not entirely regretful of his actions, though claiming he did actually let one of his victims go. But he doesn't appear to be proud nor egotistical about his actions either. He discusses them in a way, and with Howard's calming demeanor, that you're left wondering if this guy is just bluffing for attention or if he's simply a sociopath. While I would like to dive deep into Clay and his stories, Clay was never actually caught. The mystery of Clay the serial killer remains practically an urban myth, although the channel Unresolved covers this story in great detail. I've posted a link to their video down below if you're interested in more about Clay. While I do think that the story of Clay is very real, it also equally feels unreal. His responses, his confessions, they all seem too casual. And also, with this happening in 1997, the internet was far from where it is now. To call the biggest radio talk show of the world and confess multiple murders without even using a voice changer and then get away with it sounds almost too good to be true but I'll leave that decision up to you. Normally for my outros, I tell you to have a great night and to subscribe or look at my Patreon, but tonight we listen to a rock. Hell yeah.